a pro before it's over. You know? All right, we're ready. All right. Hello, Milwaukee. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Hello, Milwaukee. This is Pastor Walter Owens with my co-host, the one and only Pastor Charles Emery. Hallelujah. Charles Emery. <laughs> hallelujah. Lord have mercy. So we wanted to put up with this today. That's right. You know what? The funny thing about every week with you, every uh, time we get a special guest in the house with us, you just act up. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Come on. I gave you a note last week. I said we're going to have a special guest in here. This lady is a, a woman of God. Do not act up. Even Sean sent you a memo, and here you is again, messing up. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with him, Sean, but I'll tell you one thing. Well, i tell you what. What? It, the Lord has a way of making things work out fine anyhow. Does he? Yes, he well, does. Well, i tell you what then, Mr. Fine Anyhow. <laughs> Why don't you introduce our guest today? Amen. <laughs> I'm so excited today because the Lord has uh, blessed us to have a wonderful person, a friend of mine, a young lady who's powerful in the Lord, and a poet. Mm -hmm. And uh, her name is Melody Lawrence. And I guarantee after hearing her today, you're going to be excited, you're going to run out and get her book. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How you doing, sister? Uh, Praise God. Beauty. There you go. Praise God. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I was just looking at something. I, I'm, I'm dictating an accent. <laughs> and that accent, boy, it sounds good. It's one of, the, one of my favorite places that uh, God has blessed me to travel around the world. I see that you were born in where? Come, hey, come on now, came on. How long you been here in the States? Um, I'd say about maybe two decades. Now. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, speak a little bit more in there. I know you're a little nervous, but that's okay. She's from Kingston, Jamaica, and I, I'm, as I'm reading the bio here, your parents nurtured you. And I see that you love art, sports, music, and at an early age you performed at many festivals competition yeah. and one of the things that you truly love is poetry yeah. and I see here pastor she has a, a, a new book out yes the book is called the heart to one soul heart by to... Melanie Lawrence amen amen, amen. <laughs> sister help us uh, what gave you the inspiration to write this particular book um, well for the last decade what I've been doing is teaching veterans and in my spare time I volunteered to help homeless veterans through their um, trials that they have. Um, some have psychological issues, some mm -hmm. have trauma, substance abuse. And so with my background, I figured that I could spend my spare time helping them. And the best way I know how to help is to write poetry. Mm -hmm. So I'd write poems to uplift them. I'd speak with them and then I'd write particular stuff about them, their character. I'd analyze them and then they could see themselves on paper. And the response that I got and the way they felt, they expressed to me, and it gave me such a joy that I continued to do it for many years. And so I have like a whole dialogue of um, poems that I've written for veterans that I've met. And um, when 2020 came, I was so sad because I couldn't go volunteer. We were all forced to be inside. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking one day to myself and I said, well, this year is such a year for everybody. It's like we're all at war. So then I, I, mm -hmm. I said, Lord, you know, after this is over, what's going to happen to not only the homeless people, but other people whose lives are going to be affected or be broken in some way? Amen. And Amen. so... Um, you know, it just came in my spirit, and I said, well, once this is finished, this is going to be the greatest war against all our minds, and so we're all going to be veterans of something. Mm, wow. And so instead of just writing poems for the veterans, I said, I'm going to write poems for everybody in the whole wide world, because we're all veterans now after this we have to um, overcome, and so I decided to write a dialogue of poems reminding everybody about their value and about um, seeing the good in all that has transpired despite the losses that, you know, will be 
you know, incurred during. Amen. The Amen. That's awesome. You yeah. know, because yeah. Pastor, I'm looking here. It says heart to sow. What, what do you mean by heart to one sow? What is that? What does that mean? Well, um, the heart signifies love, of course. Okay. okay. But the um, heart of a man, as um, the Creator specifies, the heart of a man defines that man. So if your heart doesn't contain what it was originally designed to contain, then you're just a shell of a man. Mm. You can't wow, do, that's deep. You can't do um, the work that you're supposed to do on earth, which is supposed to be um, humbling work of service to, to your fellow brother or to mankind. So um, our journey here on earth as human beings, we're supposed to be vessels of humility sharing and being a brother to whoever we encounter. I love that. I and love so that. And so heart to one soul is from my heart, the love from my heart to any soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your intellect. So if my love for poetry or the gift that God has given me with poetry, I can use that and extend that to another person, then I'm being a servant. I'm being a um, service to my fellow man. Amen. Mm -hmm. Giving and speaking to their soul and saying, hey, I know one day the facade of love may be diminished in your marriage or your um, your life or you may lose somebody or something bad may occur and I want to, as a stranger, remind you or speak to your soul then Amen. that you Amen. have value. Okay. God is okay. there for you. Okay, okay. And so I'm here just tapping you on the shoulder <laughs> to remind you that, you know, someone cares. Go ahead, Pastor. Go you ahead. know, that brings me to the scripture. This morning it came into my spirit, Jeremiah 31, 3. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath appeared of, of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So when I thought about that, about the heart to one's soul, God says, I love you everlasting love. Mm -hmm. So because of his love, the question I have for you today is that do you believe that as the Lord drew, drew us to himself by his love, that the same love that in God radiated in your heart to make you want to draw others through love, through your book? Yes, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> <laughs> However, the magnitude of love that God has, yeah. no human being will ever possess. Explain it. And the reason why we are imperfect beings, we're not perfect, he is. So sometimes there's going to be instances where we will fall short. And there's going to be times where a person may love their spouse. For instance, you'll love your wife or, you know, something will come up. And maybe on that day, you don't love them as much as you should because they have hurt you or they have offended you. Mm. So, the love that God has is unconditional love. We as human beings, sometimes we have conditional love. And so the difference is in the depth of how you care about someone else. Mm. That's good. That's you know, good. Uh, I heard you say something earlier, my sister, when you was talking about being a servant, mm -hmm. how to serve God, you know. And that, what would you say about leaders? You know, because, uh, and it's not a political statement, but mm -hmm. people in general that God has blessed to reach out to his people. And I find that we now we're, we're falling short mm -hmm. on what God has us to do. We're falling short on bringing people back to Christ. Mm -hmm. It's like we are blinded now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone that want to reach out to God? I mean... Uh, uh, well, I just want to say this. Mm -hmm. What was one of your favorite scriptures of the Bible? I think yesterday you shared a favorite scripture, Joy, <laughs> and I asked you why. Why was that so important? Well, my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures is Acts 17, the book of Acts 17, but in particular from verse 24 to 28. Uh -huh. And uh, that has to do with um, showing about Paul. Okay. And okay, um, Paul okay. was incarcerated in the previous scripture in um, Acts 16. And one of the things that um, stood out to me was that he was willing to, as a servant of God, go through anything. Mm. And still mm. had the fortitude to carry on. 
because he knew his life of service had a reward with his creator's unconditional love That's that he had awesome. for okay, him. Okay, so okay. he was willing to do anything for that love. And so I'd say like for leaders nowadays, they have been blinded because the scales of their eyes are not really open, they only pretend in a manner of speaking. Whoa. So for them to lead, the scales of their eyes have to be removed so that they can lead the people in the right way. And what I mean by that is a lot of um, leaders nowadays, especially in the church, they have gone to prosperity teachings. And in the book of Acts, it, it states between um, verses 23 and 28, it shows you that God doesn't need anything from us. Mm. He doesn't need anything from mankind's hands. Mm -hmm. He even went as far as um, putting it in John's spirit to say that the blood is one blood that comes from the creator that made us all. So we're all the same. Mm. So if a leader is put over us, he should then educate us to know that we're all the same and that we're all supposed to believe and do according to God's will, the mm -hmm. same way. So it's not gonna be an exception because I'm the pastor, I can do this, or I'm a leader, I can do that, and then the people, they can do whatever they want, and then on Sunday or Saturday, or whenever they come to worship, then we all can just pretend. That's not how it works. Okay, right. you know, I, I love that, Pastor. I, 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 you gotta help me jump in this because, you know, what I'm feeling, what my sister is saying is, we should not let the world steal our identity. Right. Yes, because the world is mundane. The joys um, in the world, they're temporal. And the joy that comes from God and knowing what is to come after is eternal. So if you spend your whole life chasing riches and offerings and the things of the world and wealth, your soul has not been mm. fed. Mm. And if your soul is not fed, then you're hungry inside. You may look good on the outside, but you're the shell of a man. So that's why I'm looking at heart to <laughs> one soul. <laughs> Amen. Right. And in your book, come on, Pastor. So it goes to this point. It <laughs> goes to this point um, concerning um, when you mentioned about the scales. That means blinded. And I look at it in the aspect of being blinded by selfish ambitions because we're not really fulfilling the call of God on our lives. Mm. It's about what I can get from the people. That's why they say a lot of churches, you got shepherds are bleeding the sheep mm. because they're trying to take everything that they have for their own personal satisfaction, which mm. caused you to lose your identity because the enemy, the enemy influences you. Not only does he influence you, but he steals your identity because he put the blinders on you to make you forget who you are. Mm -hmm. I love James chapter 1. I think it's around the 17th verse. It talks about behold your face in a looking glass and then you walk away and forget who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens in leadership today. They get into the word of God. They claim they're following the word of God, living by the word of God. But soon the enemy brings something enticing to you. You're driven by your own desire and the lust of your flesh to what God says. Okay, so I have a question for both of you out there. Mm -hmm. let's, let's move away from the church right now for mm -hmm. a moment. Mm -hmm. you have family members or friends that it is so hard for them to trust and believe in what the words say mm -hmm. what can we do as a people a body of Christ is to help people understand the, like you said that blindness mm -hmm. remove that veil so I can start seeing now mm -hmm. what would you speak or say to someone to help them understand that the word of God is a living word and it will help their heart to their soul. Well, um, in particular, we can just use a reference from the Bible because the Bible is a book of, um, you know, laws and concepts and principles, but they also have stories to illustrate um, a certain point. So with that question, we can remember the story about um, Elijah and his servant when he's surrounded by the army and mm -hmm. um, his um, servant went outside, ran back inside, and he was so afraid. And um, Elijah was telling him, well, you don't have to be afraid. And he was like, oh, you about 80 some years old. You can't fight all these people. And so um, he said, Lord, I would like for you <laughs> to remove the scales from mm -hmm. his eyes so okay, he okay. can see that there are more with us than there are with them. So even if it was 10,000 outside, when God removed his scales from his eyes, he saw 
chariots of fire yes, so yes. much a multitude that he was no longer afraid so again it goes to my point to say that the temporal things of this world are the things that you can physically see those are the things that your body yearns for like the lust of the flesh mm -hmm. like a man has his wife or a woman has her husband and she may go outside of her marriage and then when it's found out you know either or they cry and it's like well you know i love you and you know i'm sorry and stuff like that but had they fed their soul the word of god they would have been able because their spiritual eyes would have been open so they could have seen that rule they mm -hmm. could have seen that law they could have seen that principle to say hey before I fornicate and go outside my marriage, I'm breaking the law of the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Once your spiritual eyes are open, you can see these things based on the situations and the scenarios. You can actually see what's going on. A child has no guidance. They go out and, you know, they commit a crime. And you can say, well, you know, that child wasn't raised right. Actually, it, it goes deeper than that. Was that child so nurtured from an age, early age to know right from wrong, to know that the Bible says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt honor thy parents, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. They don't know these laws and know that it goes deeper than the physical laws like, you know, our court system. It goes deeper to eternal laws. Mm -hmm. Because when you do these things, they levy curses in your bloodline for the mm. generations to come. Ooh, so if come you're on, sister, come ignorant on. <laughs> and you have no knowledge of that as well, it's not just about the temporary crime that you commit here and you're gonna spend your life incarcerated. It's about your generations to come that you have now cursed by spilling someone else's blood. Wow. Mm. Your soul wow. needs this food. It's important for the soul to be reminded of their value daily so they don't slip up. Amen. Amen. What is one of your favorite poems out of your book? Um, my favorite poem would be um, In One Night mm. and Carrie. Why One Night? <laughs> Because a lot of things happened in one night. In one night, we went to bed. The next morning, we woke up. There was Corona. <laughs> so in one night, we were forced to be away from our loved ones. That is true. You know, so in true. one night, you went down the street and you didn't come back. In That's one right. night, my friend went to sleep and my friend didn't wake up again. You know, in one night, you can go to sleep. And it was like, well, you know, on Tuesday, we're probably going to get some showers. Mm -hmm. And when Tuesday comes, we have a flood and everyone dies. In one night, we can be so humbled by God, we have no regrets again about anything. That's good. Okay. That's good. And in one night, yes. we can go from being homeless and someone comes and say, hey, I have a place that you can stay. Wow. So in one night, our situations can change, whether good or bad. But God says, in all things, give thanks. Amen. And amen. the outcome amen. will be good. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. I like that. Well, you, you know, you, uh, you're making my spirit, my spirit just overjoyed. You know, what? Uh, we had a meeting yesterday, and, and I had to make a note. <laughs> uh, and just looking at something, you were saying when you was a student, you would shine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You love mathematics. Mm -hmm. And you broke down the formula. <laughs> take that formula, and I want to say this, Pastor, and and when I say take this formula of your mathematics, mm -hmm. as you were just share with us in one night, mm -hmm. we went to bed the next day, we woke up, we lost a loved one, mm -hmm. we have a pandemic. How would you put a focus on that? Using mathematics and a formula. Yeah, that to, to help people understand that God is still in control. As in your words, you just said, in everything, give God thanks. Well, we can use an example from my favorite book, the Bible. <laughs> and um, so we can even use the one with the um, fishes and the loaves, the five fishes and okay. the loaves. Okay. So um, that's a common story. So we can relate to those uh, numbers. So. Here's a formula that could work for that with our situation to um, have both interrelate. 
So we are here and we have this pandemic. We are here and a lot of people have lost loved ones. We're here and a lot of people have no food, right? But we're still alive. Right, right. So we can go with ratios then. So um, today or yesterday, there were five people that I knew for a fact that were healthy. You knew three. Mm -hmm. And Charles knew two. And uh, based on what happened in one night, when I called you, I told you, well, four of my friends died. Mm -hmm. One of his died and two of yours died. So we can say then that in everything, we're going to suffer loss because of the times that we're living in. Mm -hmm. However, as human beings, if we do give thanks or if we are, we are grateful, then we can say, all right, well, when tomorrow comes, if I have life, I will give of me to somebody else because we want the ratio to go up, so we're going to multiply. So in order for us to multiply, whatever it is that we have that we would hoard, and we know others don't have food, we will go and give some Amen. of our food. Amen. And Amen. you would give some of your food. So we're trying to save a life because we're not the giver of life, so we don't know if we too are going to die the next day. Amen. But okay. you know, one, one, one thing, you got something for a quick question? I was just looking at the scripture, said, for in him we live and move and have our being. Also, you know, as certain that also of your own, your own poet have said, for we are also his offsprings. I find that a very fascinating scripture because it reminds us that without God's existence in our life, we can do nothing. Nothing. You know, even when it comes to writing the poetry, he said we're his poet, we're his poet, so we're, we're representations of him in the earth. And one thing I want to say too concerning um, the love of God, that when God's love is displayed in our life, his love will reach every heart at the same time because that's how God is. He can be everywhere at the same time throughout the world. Question for you. The, our time is getting down. It goes so fast. But I have a question for you before we get out of here. Uh, what is it that you want people to take away once they read your book? Um, you know, as we discussed, I'd like for anybody to um, that reads Heart to One Soul to remember their value. Mm -hmm. And their value is very important because your value is priceless as a human being. And so... You have to remember your value on the days where you don't feel valuable. You have to remember your value on the days where you don't even feel like getting out of bed. You have to remember your value on the days when you're depressed because you didn't make yourself. So right. you have right. to appreciate yourself enough to forgive yourself of mistakes that you've made in the past or whatever it is that you're going through. So my book is just a reminder to let you know that you are special, you're of value, and you're priceless because you're wonderfully designed. Amen. Amen. By Amen. Creator. Amen. 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 Oh, uh, what? How can we get your book right quick? Um, you can get my book. It's available on Amazon.com, mm -hmm. and it's also available on BookBaby.com. BookBaby.com. Yeah. Okay, well, Pastor. Okay. Go ahead, all right. Before we get out of here. Well, I just want to encourage all of you who heard this uh, a, a lesson today, you know, uh, from my dear sister, that the words of God that's spoken through her prophetically by his spirit, that you stay encouraged, stay excited, and allow the love of God to manifest in your hearts and allow him to strengthen and encourage you. So, Father, we thank you for this time of sharing today. We thank you for our guests. We pray you continue to bless and keep all your people, Father God, in the will of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having me. Yes, and yes. Thank you. All. God bless you too. Bye-bye. That goes quick.